Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture in the build large language models from scratch series. Today we are going to look at step number four in the instruction fine tuning hands on project which we have started and that step is loading a pre trained large language model. Until now we have looked at three steps. The first one involved data set download and formatting. The second involved batching the data set and the third involved creating data loaders. So here's the data set which we have been looking at, which consists of 1100 entries of instructions, inputs and outputs. They are in various fields from English to geography to general knowledge, etc. And essentially through this data set, our aim is to teach the LLM to be able to correctly follow instructions. Um, and that's what fine tuning refers to in pre training. If we just used a pre-trained LLM, it does not follow instructions very well. So that's why we need to train it with a specific data set. Now, before we come to loading a pre-trained LLM, we first needed to spend a lot of time on downloading this data set, then converting it into a format called the alpaca prompt style, then batching the data set, which is creating different batches and ultimately creating data loaders. Now that we are ready with the data loaders, we can go ahead and load a pre-trained LLM. What does it mean loading a pre-trained LLM? Well, what we are going to do here is that this is the LLM architecture which we have constructed in this lecture series. And there are several places where there are trainable weights. So for example, in multi-head attention, there are the query key value weight matrices. Then in feed forward neural network, there are the neurons and their weights. In layer normalization one and two, there are the scale and the shift parameters which have parameters or weights associated with it. Then there is the token embedding layer and the positional embedding layer. There are trainable weights associated with these two layers as well. If you add up all of these trainable weights, then we have more than 1 million or more than 100 million trainable such parameters. Uh, in the pre-training process, these parameters are trained on a huge amount of data. So for example, GPT-2. GPT-2, if you search about GPT-2 weights released, um, GPT-2 weights released, OpenAI actually pre-trained GPT-2 on a huge amount of data. And not just that, when they pre-trained the LLM and optimized the trainable weights, optimized all of these weights which I just described over here, they released those weights publicly. Which means that as users, we can have access to those weights and we can utilize those weights. Now, when OpenAI released their weights, they released it for four different models. So if you see the OpenAI GPT-2 weights, they released it for actually multiple models, 124 million, 150, 155, 8 million, 345 million, 774 million, etc. So you have different folders corresponding to the parameter size. And then based on each folder, you can download these weights on your local PC. Why are we downloading these weights in the first place before fine tuning? The reason we are downloading these weights and reusing them is that when the when we reuse these weights, it means that a lot of information is already captured correctly. So for example, when we do token embedding, we want to project the words or tokens into a higher dimensional vector space, right? And we want to project them so that the semantic meaning is captured. To train a huge neural network again from scratch here would take very a very long time for us and computational resources. Instead, we will directly use the pre-trained GPT-2 weights. So that will help us. In fact, in all of these parameters, reusing the GPT-2 weights actually helps us um, because the model now starts from a much more knowledgeable state instead of a random initialization. So the main goal of reusing the pre-trained weights is that the model starts from a knowledgeable state instead of instead of a random initialization so we are going to load these pre-trained weights and then we are going to train on the specific data set which we have curated so we are going to load the pre-trained weights and then use these training data loaders, testing data loaders and validation data loaders. So the weights and parameters which we load from GPT-2, of course, they will change during the process because we will do one more training procedure 
on the specific data set. But at least we won't start from a random state of all these parameters. We'll start from a knowledgeable state. And so the computational time it will take to fine tune or to train on our specific uh, data set will be much lower. So that will be much more efficient. That's why the fine tuning process always happens after the pre-training process. In the pre-training, we always take the model to a knowledgeable state and then we train it again on a specific data set so that it can further improve its weights and its parameters. So now let us go into code and let us load the pre-trained LLM, which means that let us use the weights um, which we get from GPT-2. One thing which I would like to mention here is that when we developed the spam versus no spam email classifier, and when we use the GPT-2 weights, we use the weights from a model which is 117 million parameter. But now we have to use the model which is much higher because we because I saw that a smaller parameter which is 124 million parameter model does not perform very well in the instruction fine tuning task. That's why we have to use a larger model. So as I've indicated on the whiteboard, we will load GPT-2 with 355 million model, 355 million uh, which are the number of model parameters okay awesome so instead of using the smallest 124 million parameter model as before we load the medium size model with 355 million parameters right and uh, that takes approximately 1.42 gigabytes of space so please make sure that as i'm showing you the code below you have this much amount of space on your local machine i'm not using any fancy gpu or any uh, high processing speed computer i am simply using a macbook air 2020 so these these are the model configurations for which gpt 2s weights are publicly released and we are going to use the gpt medium which is the 355 million parameter model it has the context size of 1024 it has 24 uh, transformer blocks and within each transformer block there are 16 attention heads so in choose model, we have chosen GPT-2 medium, 355 million parameters. And in the base configuration, we have vocabulary size 50257, context length of 1024, right? And uh, dropout rate, we are using zero. And the query key value bias, we are setting this to be equal to true. And that is because when we initialize the query key and the value weight matrices, we are also going to initialize the bias terms. 50257 is essentially the vocabulary size on which GPT-2 was trained on. Then what we are going to do is that we are going to run this download and load GPT-2 function. And I'm just going to show you this function briefly. What this download and load GPT-2 function actually does is that it, uh, it accesses this URL and it downloads these seven files onto the local machine. So you can even access these files on Kaggle. If you click on this 355 if you click on the 355 million and click on the seven files, you can get these seven files and you can download it to your local PC. However, just downloading these files is not enough. You need to do some pre-processing steps on this file so that, um, so check this function, which is load GPT-2 parameters from the TensorFlow checkpoint. What this does is that after downloading the parameters uh, from the seven files, it actually converts it into a specific dictionary. And through this dictionary, you can handle or access these parameters in a much more easier manner. We have covered the details of this in a previous lecture, which is titled pre-training using GPT-2 weights. And that's a one hour lecture in which this code has been explained in a lot of detail. For now, all you need to know is that when you run this code, it first of all downloads these seven files. It creates a folder called 355 million and it downloads these seven files and then it also has this, the thing which it returns mostly is that this params dictionary. The params dictionary essentially consists of the transformer blocks, the token embeddings, the positional embeddings, the final normalization layer parameters, which are very accessible. If you just download these seven files, it becomes difficult for us to integrate these parameters with the code which we have written earlier. That's why it's very essential for you to run this load GPT-2 params from TF checkpoint. Uh, so that the params dictionary is created successfully. Uh, if you don't understand this code right now, it's fine. All you will have to do is just execute this line of code, which is settings comma params equal to download and load GPT-2. What this will essentially do is that first of all, from GPT download three, we have to import this function. So this file, which I showed you over here is called GPT download 3.py. From this file, we are importing this function. 
and uh, the results of that function we are storing in something called settings co comma params so when you run up till here the 1.42 gigabytes model which has been shown over here so see this is the 1.42 gigabytes that will be downloaded so for me this took a long time to download because the internet connection was not very strong and uh, the file kept pausing a lot in the middle so please make sure that you are sitting in an area which has strong internet connection and you have memory on your device if you have 1.4 or 1.5 gigabytes in a strong uh, internet area i think this download should happen in a much quicker manner and then what we are going to do is that after we download these weights we are going to load weights into gpt what this function does is that we have constructed this gpt architecture right at all of the places where there are trainable parameters this function appropriately maps the downloaded parameters in the params dictionary into our model so remember i mentioned that this function essentially returns this dictionary called as params in which is the weights and parameters have been arranged in a specific format when you run this function load weights into gpt the parameters from that params dictionary are downloaded into our model and you can actually control f control f load load weights into gpt and you will see that we have defined this function before load weights into gpt um what this function essence essentially does is that the params dictionary it maps the values extracted from the params dictionary into the gpt architecture which we have constructed before so you can think of this whole code block code block as one assignment step we are assigning the downloaded parameters to our model we have had a separate lecture to explain this fully so i am not covering this in detail right now let me take you to the current code which we are on so uh, then you have to run after you run the settings comma params then you have to run load weights into gpt which loads the downloaded weights from the 355 million model into Uh, your gpt architecture and then you set the model into evaluation mode so if your laptop does not have a strong configuration with respect to memory or processing speed you can even choose the model year to be gpt2 small which has 124 million parameters and that should take you one third of the time or half of the time it takes you to load the weights of this gpt2 medium model if on the other hand your laptop has a very high processing speed and if you have gpu access i recommend you can use gpt2 large or even gpt2 x excel if you have gpu access because then the results which you will get will be much better than uh, what we will obtain with smaller models okay when you run or when you run this file you will see that you will get uh, outputs such as these i have only i have already downloaded the gpt2 parameters so i am getting file already exists now what we can do is that before diving into fine tuning the model which we will come to in the subsequent section what we can do is that we can actually check the pre trained llm's performance on one of the validation tasks by comparing its output to the expected response we have not even trained or fine tuned our llm on the data set yet on this data set but i just want to check the performance of this llm uh, by taking some very specific example so what i'm going to do now is that i'm going to take this example from our data set and the example is that below is an instruction that describes a task write a response that appropriately completes the request and the instruction is that convert the active sentence to passive and the sentence is the chef cooks the meal every day um and you can see that i have taken this sentence from the validation data it is the first sentence from the validation data so actually let me check it out over here so if i put chef yeah this is the instruction input and output so the instruction is convert the active sentence to passive the chef cooks the meal every day and the correct output uh i think convert yeah i think this is the one let me check it again yeah the instruction is convert the active sentence to passive the chef cooks the meal every day it's this sentence exactly and the correct output is the meal is cooked by the chef every day so if the G, if the llm is fine tuned correctly the output which it should give should somewhat be of a passive tense so if the active tense is the chef cooks the meal every day the passive tense should be the meal is cooked by the chef every day we have not trained our llm on this data at all so we are not expecting to get a correct answer but i just want to see how wrong we are or how far off we are from the correct answer 
So you can use the generate function which you have defined previously. What this function does is that you have to pass in the maximum number of new tokens to generate. And then based on the model and based on the trained weights, remember we are just using the weights downloaded from GPT to medium. Based on this, based on these weights, the next tokens or the new tokens will be generate new tokens will be generated. And here we have to specify the maximum number of new tokens, which I'm mentioning to be 35. And the context length is of course 1024, which is the context length of the medium configuration. Uh, that's it actually. And then you have to pass in the input text. So I'm passing in the input text over here and then the model, which is the model with the pre-trained weights. And then the generated text, we have to convert it back from token IDs into text. So let us print this out right now and let us see the response. So the response here. So one thing to mention is that when you use the generated text, uh, it returns the combined input as well as output. This behavior was convenient in the previous chapters because pre-trained LLMs are primarily designed to complete the text, right? So we can predict the input and we can predict the output. So it will just look like an input output pair where the input is completed. But now we actually just need to focus on the model generated response, right? Every time we print the generated text, we don't need the input text. We don't need the instruction. We just need the response, right? Uh, so now what I'm doing is that when you print out the response, we need to subtract the length of the input instruction from the start of the generated text. So we have to just print out the response here. So we mentioned that you subtract the input, you subtract the instruction and just print the response text. So here is the response which our model gives. The response which is given by the model is the chef cooks the meal every day. So it has just recycled the first sentence. In the response itself, it has included an instruction. And uh, in the instruction, it is retaining the same instruction, convert the active sentence to passive, the chef cooks the, which means that the model has not at all followed my instruction. Uh, in fact, the pre-trained model is not yet capable of currently correctly following the given instruction. It creates a response section that is good, but it simply repeats the original input sentence. It simply repeats the original input sentence and it also repeats a part of the instruction just as it is but it fails to convert the active sentence to passive voice. That's the main uh, thing which I want to convey to you that without fine tuning, the model itself just using the pre-trained weights, it's not doing a good job at all. In fact, it fails to convert the active sentence to the passive. It's recycling the same text which you provided as an instruction and it's creating this hashtag, hashtag, hashtag instruction in the response itself. That is also not good. So now what we'll do in the next section is that we are going to implement the fine tuning process to, impl to improve the model's ability to comprehend and appropriately respond to such requests. So the reason fine tuning exists in the first place is because without fine tuning, even if we load the weights from a parameter, which is 355 million, or even if you load from 774 million, you will see that even for a 774 million GPT-2 parameter, uh, GPT-2 model, the response is not coherent without fine tuning and that's why in the next section we are going to look at fine tuning the llm on instruction data which means that we'll actually model or we'll actually modify the weights and parameters of this gpt model so that it can try to understand these instruction input output pairs from this specific data set uh, okay everyone this brings us to the end of the lecture where we looked at loading a pre-trained llm I initially planned to cover the fine tuning in this lecture itself, but I thought it will be good to cover it in the next lecture. Otherwise, the duration of the lecture would have been pretty long. I hope you are liking these lectures. We are now very close to actually finishing the entire fine tuning and then extracting the responses, evaluating the responses. And the code file which I'm going to share with you can be used to perform a wide range of instruction fine tuning tasks. So thanks a lot, everyone. In the next lecture, I'll explain the fine tuning the model process and I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.